Let me see. What's that? You know what order it is on the agenda? Well, this is the only agenda item. Oh, it's the only one. That's right. Okay, so who's going to... Um, I've got... Let's see. Um, I've got Percy, Betty, and Honesty. Do you want to intersperse? Or do you think yeah. it ought to be... Like, do them, league, them, league? Yeah. You want to do it that way? Yeah. Do you want to okay. call on, the, on right. the against the bill? You know, I screw that up on a regular basis. Yeah. So, who do you want to go? Who do you... um, I'll go first. Okay. And then maybe, you know, Percy. <laughs> and then Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, and then I've got, I definitely want to get Christy also in because uh, she's younger. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You're on the committee. Meeting to order in the um, 
Clerk Calro. Senator Butler. Here. Senator Elliott. Here. Senator Orr. Senator Allen. Here. Senator Albritton. Here. Senator Roberts. Here. Senator Bell. Senator Kelly. Senator Coleman Madison. Senator Marika Coleman. Here. Senator Robert Stewart. Here. We have a quorum. Quorum's here, and the committee is ready to do business. <clears throat> uh, we've got uh, one bill. That's it, and they're signing up. One bill in committee uh, that's due a public hearing. So, um, Representative Keel, I believe this is your bill, and if you would come forth and tell us what uh, House Bill 209 is uh, all about. Mr. Chairman, as we start, we have an amendment, uh, and hold on one second. Let me yes, get to uh, get the bill before us. The clerk will call the bill. House Bill Two Hundred Nine. Uh, uh, Representative Kill, and we've got an amendment, Jamie. If you would, yes, sir. I'm going to take it first. Senator Roberts, you have uh, offered an amendment. Would you tell us what the amendment does? Yes, sir. It's in your packet. Uh, it replaces line nine, page one, with the following ordering, requesting, collecting, pre-filing. Then uh, replace line 23 on page one with the following, shall be unlawful for any person to knowingly. Next is replace line 25, page one, with the following absentee application or absentee ballot other than. And then on line 28, page one, replace uh, quality of class A misdemeanor. And then the last one be replace line 54 on page two with the following, it shall be a violation <laughs> of. And with that, I'd move favorable on the Second. Opinion. Ms. Chairman. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Senator Coleman. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. You know, I um, definitely not telling you how to run your committee, Mr. Chairman, but I know there are people that stream and they are watching. There hasn't even been an explanation yet about what this bill is prior to us even talking about the amendment. And so I was just asking for, I mean, I know those of us that are here, I know those of uh, folks that are here to speak, they're familiar with it. But someone else that's watching might not even have a clue of what, what we're talking about. Your points are taken. The, the bill has been brought before the committee. The chairman has called the sponsor of the bill, uh, Representative Hill, to explain the bill. Um, there is one amendment that has been offered. Uh, I think it'd be best to have the whole bill read or heard after the amendment is adopted, which changes the, the bill. So the bill is going to be before the committee. Uh, it's been offered by Senator Roberts. Uh, motion for favorable. There's a second. Second by Senator Elliott. Uh, clerk, call roll on the amendment. <clears throat> Aye. Senator Elliott, Senator Orr, Senator Allen, Aye. Senator Albritton, Senator Roberts, Senator Bell, Senator Kelly, Senator Coleman Madison, Senator Marika Coleman. I own the amendment because it makes it not as bad. <laughs> Senator Robert Stewart. Good point. Okay. Eight. Eight uh, eyes for the amendment. Uh, the amendment is adopted. Uh, okay. Uh, Representative Keel, explain your bill to us. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the amendment. Uh, it does clarify some, some questions that people have had, and it may cl clarify some uh, concerns that uh, people in the audience may have today. Uh, so the, the amendment takes out the word distributing throughout the bill. And so uh, on, on the first page, if you look at the first page, section one, it takes out the word distribute. Uh, it also changes the uh, person who violates section one to a class A misdemeanor rather than a class D felony. That was an issue for some people that they had with the bill. Um, 
uh, in addition, and this and this may be give the most clarity for the folks here today, on page two where it talks about individuals who may be blind or who may be disabled or who may read may not be able to read or write. The, the wording now is, it shall not be a violation of Section 1 if an individual of the voter's choosing provides assistance to a voter due to the voter being blind, disabled, or unable to write. There was some concern around that. We heard that, thus the amendment today to make that uh, so that it does not apply to anyone who is blind, disabled, or is unable to read or write. Uh, you've heard the um, sponsors or comments or questions. Seeing so none. Quick, quick question. Yeah. How do we define disabled? Um, I know there's a lot of concerns. I've gotten call for, calls about this legislation. Um, I have a lot of constituents in my district. It's a senior, very um, lots of senior citizens in my district, um, several nursing homes, and I know we need to make sure that people in nursing homes have access um, to the democratic process, the voting process. And sure. so um, how do we define that? This would mirror the Federal Voting Rights Act. We even have the code in here so that it's, it's clearly defined in 52 U.S.C. 10508, which is the uh, Federal Voter, Voter Rights Act. And so how are the federal government defines disabled? blind or unable to read or write is how Alabama will do the same. It's currently federal code now. Senator Stewart, did I answer your questions? Well, Senator Coleman. Well, I know that there are people here to speak uh, and don't. We're going to have them speak. Right. But, you know, I and I hear the gentleman, but I don't see that in here, though. I mean, you know, we can believe something. It's on it's on page it. two, I'm bottom of page it. two, and top of page three. Per, top of page three is where it cites the code. You see it now. Thank you. Any other questions for the sponsor? <clears throat> okay, we'll go into public hearing now. I've got uh, five people, maybe six signed up. Uh, we'll allow about uh, two minutes for uh, comments. And the uh, first person I have on the agenda is Kathy Jones. Kathy, welcome to the committee. Thank you. I appreciate your allowing us to have a public hearing on this bill. And my name is Kathy Jones. I'm the president of the League of Women Voters of Alabama. I live in Madison County. I'm here to express strong opposition to HB 209. If passed, Alabama would make felons of law-abiding people who are volunteering to help others be prepared to vote. In their churches, church congregations, residential facilities, senior centers, colleges, festivals, local farmers markets, barbershops, libraries, coffee shops, you, voter drives happen everywhere. And when time comes for people who are needing to vote absentee, we are out there helping them uh, download copies of their absentee ballot applications, making sure they've got that if they have questions, we answer the questions. And we go to the registrars, we go to the absentee election managers, probate judges to get clarification on process and the rules. So we are trained. We are giving and receiving assistance to vote absentee will put Alabamians at risk of financial hardship and it will give them a criminal record that will cost them fines, fees and court cost. In fact, the fiscal report coming out of the House says that it would increase receipts to the state general fund from fines, increase receipts to the state general fund, county general funds, and other funds to which court costs are deposited. And I find that offensive. The substitute bill approved by the CC&E committee states that it shall be an af af affirmative defense if an individual of the voters choosing, and I understand that's been amended slightly today, uh, to 
provides assistance to a voter due to the voter being blind, disabled, or unable to read or write. And this means that the person would still be charged with a felony. They would incur court cost, and they would have a criminal record, <coughs> even if the charges were ex dismissed, and they would have to get their record expunged if they wanted to have a clean record after being vilified by the state of Alabama. How do you propose that a person who is blind, disabled, unable to read or write, prove that they're actually disabled? Kathy, your time's up. Thank you very much Thank for you. your comments. I'm opposing HB 209. Thank you. Um, Percy Garrett. Person. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gary, welcome to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for allowing me to come in and talk about this bill. Uh, I am with the National Federation of the Blind, League of Women Voters, Lions Club International, Blinded Veterans of Alabama. And I'm opposed to this bill. I wouldn't want to drag a 75 year old man or woman into court to vote for you. I am a bona fide Republican, and I vote for you. And I don't want anyone to go to jail for it. Seniors, the disabled, and people who are just old. We vote for you. We trust you to lead us and to guide us. We pray for you to do the right thing for us. To devise a bill that will criminalize the people who vote for you is satanic. Uh, Representative Keel, it's my prayer that you delete this bill and oppose it yourself because it's not good. It damages those who vote for you. The election time in 2024 is coming up and we wanna be able to be free to vote. When your time comes, we want to be able to free to vote and not be fearful of causing damage to someone who helps us. And, 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 and not just the blind and disabled, but to any of your constituents, whether able or disabled, need to be feel free to vote. So please, Mr. Kill, delete this vote, uh, de delete this uh, amendment and this bill. Mr. Garrett, your time's up. We appreciate you coming. And thank you for your comments. Thank you. <clears throat> Robin Buckaloo. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm on the state board of the League of Women Voters of Alabama. There is no organized election fraud in Alabama. The Secretary of State's office has stated this unequivocally. So whom exactly does this proposed law affect? It affects elderly homebound citizens and the immunocompromised who are afraid to venture out. It affects those who have no transportation or computer printers. It affects those who are a little confused about affidavit envelopes and how to fill them out. It affects your mother or your aunt who lives alone across the state. It makes retirement home residents into felons or it disenfranchises them. Many people do not have close relatives living nearby. What about the prospective helpers? Who are they? They are neighbors. They're home care nurses. They're church members visiting the homebound. They are Meals on Wheels delivery volunteers. Older citizens are the most reliable voters. They are your constituents who consistently vote for incumbents. This bill will do one of two things. <clears throat> it will disenfranchise a significant number of your older constituents, those who reliably turn out to vote, or it will convert the vulnerables in our communities and those who wish to assist them into felons. Either way, 
It will damage our democracy. Please vote no on HB 209. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Um, honey, uh, can't believe the first name is Steele. Honesty. Okay. Hello, thank you guys for having Steel, me. Steele, thank you and welcome to the committee. My name is Honesty Steele. I'm a 23-year-old senior at the University of Alabama, totally blind and eligible voter. Um, as we all know, we're here to talk about HB 209, which I am opposed against. Um, I go to EH Gentry, a place where individuals that I have not lived with for six months assist me daily. Um, uh, my direct family members are also a state away. And um, according to the bill, there are individuals that can help us. But the problem with this is the fact that these are strangers. Um, personally, I'm not comfortable receiving assistance from these individuals. Um, the Secretary of State, the Judge of Probate, and the absentee election managers. And um, it deters me from voting. More importantly, this bill indirectly silences the disabled community, a community full of citizens who should be granted the right to vote without restrictions related to their disabilities. Um, although this bill is proposed to reduce election fraud, um, I just hope that we take into consideration the large impact that it has on the disabled community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Steele. Um, Betty Shen. I'm honored to stand in the Alabama State House today to voice concerns regarding HB 209. I'm Voter Services Chair for the League of Women Voters Mobile. I love Alabama. I was born here, my mother, grandmother, great grandmother as well. Alabama's reputation is well known nationally and internationally. We're usually rated first in all things bad and last in things good. HB 209 proposes a Class C felony for individuals and nonpartisan groups for helping those needing assistance to complete an absentee ballot. This reminds me of the of requiring individuals to recite the Constitution in its yep. entirety, tell how many jelly beans was in a jar, how many bubbles a particular bar of soap could produce. According to John Merrill, former Secretary of State, Alabama's accuracy in voting is second to none. Nonpartisan groups, churches, and good-hearted citizens <clears throat> working to help citizens needing assistance to vote but are unable to make it to the polls are penalized. And again, those wishing to help are threatened and with outrageous penalties. Absentee voting is vital to citizens with special needs. Uh, from blindness to all manners of sickness. It should be your decision to, in seeking or delegating a person of your choice to assist in completing an absentee ballot. The process for absentee voting is complicated, even for attorneys. Instructions put in this envelope, put this envelope in this one, and this one, and that one. Not all folks are surrounded by sec relatives of the second degree. Today, I implore this body to remove these unnecessary ballots for absentee voting. HB 209 will block and exclude large groups of citizens from voting. Uh, especially those who are blind, sick. Thank you, Ms. Shen. Your time is up. I appreciate your comments. <clears throat> Ellen Buckner. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. I'm Ellen Buckner, Professor of Nursing at Samford University and the Faculty Advisor for the League of Women Voters of Samford University, a student organization. I oppose this bill because it restricts nonpartisan volunteer activities assisting prospective voters to vote effectively and in a timely manner. In particular, it restricts access for college students who may be first-time voters or voting away from their home of origin and not know how to navigate the processes, decisions, and requirements. Voting is a learned process. College students have been eligible to vote since the 1970s Vietnam War with the slogan, old enough to fight, old enough to vote. 
We conduct voter registration drives and students face multiple decisions and requirements. Most come from other, from, uh, other parts of the locations within the state. One of the first decisions is whether to vote at their home of origin or whether to vote at their campus location district. That then determines how they're going to vote. Do they have their dorm address when they register? Do, what is their polling place and how would they get there between campus, between classes? If the home of origin, how do they get an absentee ballot? When to request it, when to mail it, what ID must be included? All of these things we assist with, not to tell them how to vote, but to make it possible for them to vote. Our students are highly nonpartisan. They want to hear all sides of the story, and we are here to help them. Voting is a learned process. College students are conscientious and committed. They speak for themselves and their futures, their communities, and our country. As a lifetime educator, it is my right to help them navigate that process. Please vote in opposition to HB 209. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, Ms. Buckner. And I might say my wife is a nurse from Sanford. Okay, uh, Don Clemens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for having me here. I'm not. I'm just a concerned citizen, and I'm I'm standing here today as the previous uh, have that uh, to oppose this bill. But I I do have a couple of questions that I need to get clarified. And on here, it says uh, on page uh, two, any voter requiring assistance in order to uh, request obtaining, so you can get these uh, on, on page two, C1, any family member of the second or third degree. Well, I'm thinking about people in nursing home. They don't have these, they don't, they don't have these people uh, in, in this family line. And number two, uh, residents, uh, if if someone lives in your house six months prior to the election, they can help you. A lot of the elder people don't have this. And then it says the Secretary of State, the Judge of Probate, the absentee election manager, the absent the absentee election manager for the county, absentee election manager for the municipality. Now, how many how many elderly know how to get in contact with these people? That's my question. How many elders know how to get in contact with these? With, with the people that they cannot get assistance for. And then down here it says, uh, you may uh, seek, uh, it shall be the firmest defense uh, down on lines uh, 54 through 56. And I, I know Sen uh, Representative Keel uh, said this ABLE is in the Constitution 52 uh, on, on the back page here, 52 USC Section 50. Uh, 10508, but it just says disabled. Question, what is disabled? What is disabled? You know, I know you say it, it's, it's in writing there, but what is disabled? And then my last, it, it's on that same page, uh, uh, on page three, uh, it's talked about notaries and witnesses. Will the notary and the notaries are not they, 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 uh, are the, do you have to pay a notary sometime so they can't do it without pay, you know, without being felony? And then witnesses, then who witnesses the affidavit? Mr. Clemens, your time's up. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Is there any comments or discussion uh, from the committee? Yes, that'll complete the public hearing. I have. No one signed up for the bill. Uh, six people opposed to it. Okay, uh, Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, this is not the first time that we've had um, this. You know, of course, I'm new to the Senate, but it's not the first time that I've seen this bill. Um, I served on judiciary in the House, and we had this bill several years. Um, that sponsored actually by our current Secretary of State. And every time I gave the same example and this bill, even though we just had an amendment on it, it still does not address the issue that I brought up every time. So the example I always use is my great aunt, Olivia Bazell, Bessemer, Alabama, great aunt. That is not the second degree of kinship. So it is not uncommon 
if I was helping my great aunt, Olivia Bazell, for her to say, here, baby, take these $2 for your gas. But in that example, on page three, her offering me and then me receiving the $2, because remember, it's not the second degree of kinship, because she's my great aunt. We both then would be class B felons. And I, I don't know how many times we've talked about this. I don't know, you know, again, you know, who, who this is specifically targeting. And, and I'll say that because I was appointed by the previous Secretary of State on a committee that was called the Voter Reform, Voter Fraud Reform Task Force. And it was bipartisan and it was racially diverse. We had probate judges, we had circuit clerks, um, legislators, I mean, former uh, Supreme Court Justice John England and um, folks from the Eagle Forum. I mean, it was very diverse. And at the end of the day, what we found out from this voter reform, or voter fraud reform task force, is that we do not have these overwhelming cases of voter fraud in the state of Alabama. I mean, it, it, we just don't. And uh, it, and if that's the case, then if they're not folks, because I guess the, the term that the, the 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 current secretary of state would use, and I heard it earlier today, the ballot harvesting piece. Um, have we had those examples in the state of Alabama where there, is, there are organizations that are uh, uh, taking absentee ballots to folks who didn't even ask to have an absentee, pre-filing absentees, all of that, because the pre-file language is in here. And if we haven't had those examples, why are we doing this bill, especially when on that task force we found out we don't have this, these overwhelming cases of fraud? And one of the reasons that I actually end up agreeing to serve, when I talked to um, John Merrill, the former secretary, I said, look, if you're going to do this, I hope we don't get caught up in this national movement that there is so much, all the national politics. You all know what was going on at the time. We had a former president saying that voter fraud was going on all over the country. Election was stolen. I said, I will do it if we are not going to be caught up in that. And we did not. We really stayed strictly on the state of Alabama. And again, on that task force, we did not see these overwhelming cases of voter fraud. Now, I'm not going to say we haven't had some issues with absentees. I even had an issue in my district with absentee. But again, I don't know who this is for if we have not had those incidents in the state of Alabama. I have no further comment at this time, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Mr. Coleman. Mr. Chairman, move favor report. The motion for a favor report by Senator Elliott. Is there a second? Second by Senator Roberts. Uh, long row has been requested and be granted. Um, clerk, call the roll. Senator Elliott. Aye. Senator Orr. Senator Allen. Senator Albritton. Senator Roberts. Senator Bell. Senator Kelly. Senator Coleman Madison. Senator Marika Coleman. No. Senator Robert Stewart. Over to two. You call me? Senator Butler. Aye. <laughs> Five to two. All right. Five eyes, two nays, and bills given a favorable report. Um, any other comments, questions? No other bills? Uh, committee stands adjourned. I'm sorry, I put it down there and I forgot. Preachers of heaven. I want you to be beating her up. Okay. Sure. Sure.